Hello, uh, right, it's question time. I've got a question. I've never heard it asked exactly like it's been asked here. I kind of get asked this probably two or three times a week in various different ways, but this is, um, should I buy a Mercedes or should I buy a 10 Fords? That's kind of the question, um, property-wise. Uh, I'll come back to the question in a minute, but uh, just a reminder, question time. If you email inspire at forlandlords.com, um, send us, uh, that's what this word came into, um, they, they eventually get to me and uh, we'll uh, answer as many of them as we can. Often, you know, there's similar you know, vein, lots of them in the similar vein, and we group them together. And um, this is this is a couch slightly differently, but it's a, it's a common question. Uh, also, um, what I'm going to say at the end of this is uh, book a discovery day. I probably can't cover off all of the questions. There's three or four questions in the same email. I'm going to focus on the Mercedes and Ford thing. But um, if you want to know more, book on a discovery call. I'll be on it. The rest of the team will be on it. And you get all your uh, questions an answered. Look in the descriptions um, of, of, the, of the video. And in there is both of those email addresses. Inspire at, discovery at. You can ask a question or book on to the discovery day. Anyway, right. Um, question is... I'm not going to read it verbatim, it's a long one, but um, chap's releasing some money, £70,000 for the first buy to let investment, and that'll be cash. So the question is now, um, buy one smaller, cheaper property in cash and renovate it, or why not buy the biggest, nicest house they can um, instead of the cheaper property? And... Here's the thing, says, I guess I'm still very much in the camp of buy one Mercedes for life instead of 10 Fords. Um, and, and cars aren't an asset, they're a liability, etc., etc. He know, knows that full well. Um, then there's also some, some, some uh, questions about the goals that he's got there and how much he wants to get to, and it's a cash flow amount. Um, so yeah, put that to one side. So uh, what do we think about that? I guess the... Um, it's the common misconception that a nicer house is the Mercedes in this example. It's not true. Um, the houses that we look to buy, so we're looking to buy houses, really roughly speaking, between £50,000 and £125,000. That's you know, quite a wide band, but it's, you know, they're very similar houses, different areas of the country. They're the Rolls Royces in this example. Um, the you know, penthouse apartment in the Docklands, that's the Skoda. If you are going to be, um, Skoda's a bad example now, fine brand and they're very different to how it was in the 1980s I know that maybe I should have said lard I don't think lard is any better, any better nowadays we should probably move away from the car analogy it's not going to work however um, it, it is also this is a really important point I've had a conversation with it happens often um, one one point that he sticks out in my mind landlord was speaking to this chap for half an hour and he gets what we're doing and then at the end of it he says well, I think he gets what we're doing um, okay, so I'll do, I'll do it your way and then uh, a little bit down the line I'll sell them all and I'll buy some nicer houses. And I don't know whether it was just a complete misunderstanding there or maybe he just liked the idea of owning some nicer houses. The gold standard in terms of uh, what an investable unit is, is that lower value house where I mean, it's still got to be a decent safe home, it's got to be well maintained, it's got to be a quality dwelling, um, but it's smaller, it's cheaper. And the rent versus that value makes it the gold-plated in investment um, criteria. The, the, the £300,000 Docklands apartment just simply doesn't cut it. You can't build a property portfolio out of those kind of property building blocks. If you see or hear of somebody, you know, you, you own lots of um, penthouse apartments in the Docklands, Pound to a penny, they'll be working hard in the background. It's just somewhere to put some money. It's not me it's not building a, a, a property portfolio. Looking at landlords who have built large property portfolios, because my all my every single one of my properties falls within the category I've just mentioned, fifty to one hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. That band, the rent is anywhere between five hundred and let's say eight hundred pounds. Um, the rent just does not rise any higher. Uh, when you go up the value scale, um, the, the, the value of the property. So really, really important. They they are the gold gold standard investment uh, um, portfolio. If you're in any doubt, think about what big institutions are doing. Google build to rent. Go and look at what, you know, even if it's a, a development of 500 flats or whatever, you know, city centre stuff. 
it's got to be those numbers that have got billions of pounds to spend on it in most cases. Incidentally, you'll be able to beat them as a residential investor because you're not paying their fees. You can just go out and buy the houses. You'll do way, way better. However, look, look at divide it up. Look at the rent. They don't go out and build great big mansions anywhere and they're looking at the, uh, the bottom line. It's those companies, those build to rent companies, that then go to the pension companies, they go to hedge funds, and they sell those things on. Um, a gold-plated investment-grade uh, residential asset to rent out is between 50 and 125,000 pounds, with your rent anywhere between five and 750, 800 pounds. So, um, if you've got any other questions on that, and it's a, um, hopefully that was useful to some, some people, but it will definitely engender more questions. Book on a discovery call. Uh, you'll find the link in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the in the description there, and hopefully we get to see some of you soon. Bye for now.